Whittleton Creek is absolutely one of my favorite maps in the current Hitman games, and I intend to break down why I love it so much in this video. We're going to be taking a look at how it feels to play this map in the form of the story mode as well as freelancer. We'll start with the story mode side of things and move on to freelancer later on in the video. And we have a lot of stuff to cover so let's get right into it. When you load into Whittleton Creek you might get a sense that you've seen a place like this before in real life. I get the same thing. Not only does it take place in the US which is where I'm from but it also takes place in a seemingly normal suburban neighborhood. I feel like I've seen plenty of places like this and it makes me feel comfortable. From the rows of houses, the backyard barbecues, people walking about, to the changing leaves on the trees, this map truly feels lived in and the atmosphere is perfectly captured. There's a mailman walking around delivering mail, there's construction workers slacking off, there's garbage men slacking off, there's even sheriff deputies slacking off. Wait a minute, does anyone in this town do their damn job? There's socializing and partying and muffins, and we'll get to that later. But people just seem to be living their lives, and it's really cool to just wander around and see what you can find or listen to. There's a lot to reveal on this map, and although the layout is on the simple side for a Hitman game, this town and its citizens are anything but simple, really. We won't get into everything in this video, but we'll cover some cool stuff that I really enjoy about this map. The first thing I really want to dive into when talking about Whittleton is actually just the people, the NPCs that are on the level. The first people you'll come to know when playing this map are named Janus and Nolan Cassidy. They're the main targets for this level, and you'll need to eliminate them in order to finish the mission successfully. If you've played a decent amount of Hitman, then I'm assuming you've already taken these guys out plenty of times in plenty of different ways. And since they are the two people we get the most information for on this map, we're going to just skip covering them extensively, or at all really. They aren't really all that interesting to me, and they're not why I love this map so much. All I'll say is that this guy is old, and this guy needs a babysitter, and I hate them. You see, it's not all about the main targets for me, it's about the other people actually in Whittleton that make it so memorable for me. Not everyone has a huge role to play in this town, but I still find myself appreciating the role that they do play. This is Dale. He's the mailman I mentioned earlier. He goes around delivering mail. Yes, he actually does his job. He has dealings with multiple people around the community, and you can even get involved with them yourself and help him deliver a package. People know him well, and will even refer to him by either his first or last name. This really helps sell that small town vibe where you feel like everyone knows everyone else. This guy is undercover, and although he doesn't seem like a threat, he will not hesitate to pull out his piece if shit starts going down. This guy is also undercover, but as long as you don't cause any commotion or get into a firefight, he will stand here at this corner the entire time you play through this level. He will just never move. and. That's kind of funny to me, and I really like that. This girl is a jogger, and she can be seen running around the entire perimeter of the public area of Whittleton. She's the most mobile character on the map, and I kind of like her. I'm not sure why, but I just kind of like her for some reason. Also, you can do this. Which is kind of funny, but... The absolute most interesting character by far on this map has got to be this lady right here. This is Helen West. She's the next door neighbor of Janus, one of the map's main targets we mentioned earlier. She has a somewhat close relationship with Janus. She will call him and talk with him over the phone and she also has done him the favor of sewing his Ark Society robe. Yes, turns out Janus is part of the Ark Society, which is shown more in a different map that we shall not yet talk about. She is also the source of this town's many delicious muffins, which they give away for free every Saturday, by the way. This results in a positive reputation around the area. Everyone seems to love her and think highly of her as a member of the community. She seems innocent enough, right? But if you pay attention and listen closely to her, you will begin to uncover just how evil she really is. Now, if you're watching this video, 
You probably already know where I'm going with this. But for the few people who have no idea what's coming, this is why Helen is such an interesting addition to this level, and why she is not a perfect member of the community, like many of the citizens may think. Helen is a murderer, and probably a straight up serial killer to be honest. It turns out that Helen has killed or is killing people, and has added human body pieces to the muffin recipe. Yes, the lady who's always giving out free muffins to the community is in fact secretly poisoning everyone in town. You may have noticed that there is a house in the neighborhood that is totally vacant and up for sale. The previous tenant of this house was a man by the name of Frank Schmidt, and he is no longer part of the neighborhood because he is no longer alive. What happened to Frank, one might ask? Well, a phone conversation can be heard between Helen and Janus, where Helen confesses that it was a compound in her muffins that killed Frank. I'm not exactly sure what Helen had in the muffins at the time. It could have been one of the different poisons found in her basement, or it could have been pieces from the brain found in this jar. The reason I don't think it was the lethal poison that killed Frank is because of Helen saying this line while she is in her basement tweaking her formula. Uh, if only I had access to Schmidt's blood work. Well, that's all destroyed now, so it won't do thinking about it. Still, it was an interesting reaction, albeit entirely unexpected. If you don't expect a lethal poison to kill someone, then I have no idea why you got into the baking business to begin with. But maybe she is just as dumb as she looks. It's also implied that Helen had somewhat of a possible close relationship with Frank, because also found in her basement is a key to his bedroom, which can be found here. Helen hides a pistol under her pillow, which is this pink pistol named Rude Ruby. This is most likely her solution for killing people, unless you're a bitch like Frank and you can't just handle a little bit of human brain in your muffins. We could dive into more of the details surrounding Helen and her famous muffins, but for now we're just going to leave it here. There's a page for her on the Hitman fandom wiki, which you can check out for more info, and I highly encourage you to investigate her on your own in-game. It's really interesting and you won't be disappointed. It's just really cool to me that the developers would include a character like this with so much depth and it's totally missable. You could totally play through this level and never ever uncover the things that I've mentioned about Helen. I know I didn't pick up on any of this stuff when I was just casually playing the game years ago. It wasn't until I started watching YouTube videos like this one and getting more invested in the levels themselves that I realized just how much I was missing. With all of that character stuff out of the way, we can talk a lot more about the map itself now. To me, I think this map is absolutely gorgeous and stands out as one of the most relaxing levels in the Hitman trilogy. Its small town USA vibe and autumn aesthetic is something I'm personally really into. Fall is my favorite time of year, so seeing the changing color of the leaves on the trees really brings out the trick-or-treater in me. Who wouldn't want to go trick-or-treating in a nice little area like this? It's perfectly laid out to get lots of candy really quickly with its nearly symmetrical square layout. Maybe we can skip Muffin Lady's house though. The layout is not just good for getting that sweet sweet Halloween neighbor nectar though. I would say it's also great for the hitting of some men. Some people like a little bit of verticality in their Hitman adventures, and while I definitely don't mind it, I don't feel like I need much verticality in every level. Some maps do it well, and some maps don't. With that said, I'm glad a map like this exists in the game. Very straightforward, non-complex, and easily approachable. Verticality has its benefits, such as offering great vantage points and more unique ways to get around the level and approaching targets. But I don't mind your good old-fashioned slow-ass Agent 47 jog around the neighborhood either. While more simple in its design, Whittleton still offers some nice options for traversing the level. Even though 47 will never break into anything more than a light jog, my man can still hop fences, climb into windows, jump off of roofs, and occasionally hide in some bushes. It's worth mentioning that these mechanics are not specific to this map only, but I think they all come together in a really unique way here. Some of the houses in the area are inaccessible, which is a little bit of a bummer, but there are a good number of houses that you can get into. Some houses are vacant with almost nothing in them. Some houses are flooded with guards and cameras. This one is hosting a public party where everyone in the neighborhood is welcome. And a couple of them are actually connected by a secret underground tunnel that you can find access to in the basements of the respective homes. The homes themselves often feature an accessible garage, bathroom, bedroom, and basement to say the least. Some of them even have attics that are accessible to the player so long as you know where to look. 
Whittleton also features several types of ways to exit the level upon completing the objectives. There are seven different ways you can do this. You can obtain a key for this roadwork gate. You can use this garbage truck while wearing the garbage man disguise. You can sail out on this little raft by obtaining the ore. You can utilize this construction van while wearing the construction worker disguise. You can simply just walk onto this bridge to leave. You can use this bus stop to hitch a ride on the next bus out of town. And finally, as long as you've got a crowbar to pry open one of the eight manholes located on the road, you can safely return to the home of Master Splinter and get ready for your next mission. Now that we've talked a little bit about the map and the people and things that make it up, let's talk about how that translates to Freelancer. In my opinion, it translates pretty well. The map brings a lot to the table, Freelancer as a mode brings a lot to the table, and combined, it offers a pretty good experience. I'm not going to explain how Freelancer works in this video because that's just not really what this video is about, but I will say that I'm a really big fan of the Freelancer mode, and Whittleton is a map that I actively look for when selecting my campaigns. I love the randomness that Freelancer brings because it freshens things up quite a bit for longtime Hitman players. Whittleton, as well as many other maps, benefits greatly from this mode and has made me enjoy it more than I ever had before. I feel like this map is fully utilized when I'm playing it in Freelancer. If you're going to eliminate your targets, crack the safe open, visit your supplier, and maybe even take down some couriers before you exfil, you're going to have to go to multiple different parts of the town and you will see many of the different houses in the process. And I like that. I like being in this level for a while and really appreciating all it has to offer. It feels like a second home town to me at this point. Comparing it to eliminating the same two targets over and over again in the story mode, it's not even close. I really enjoy having different targets in different places and using all that I know about the map to eliminate my targets and get out quickly. And then, if I'm a good boy, maybe I can treat myself to the supplier and get some nice new bullet throwers for next time. I don't just love playing this level for the randomized targets though. I love doing showdowns on Whittleton. Whittleton is one of the two best maps for showdowns in the entire game. It's not a very large map, especially when you know how to move through it efficiently, so that's a big plus, given that you have to suss out the syndicate leader and then take them down before you can leave. But since this map is very open and there's so many spots you can exfil from, it makes it very easy to do showdowns really quickly. Sometimes I have the syndicate eliminated and I'm already getting down and dirty in them sewers by the time I've even been in the level for a minute and a half. I usually just load into the level with a sniper rifle, pistol, and crowbar, and that's all you really need. If you've been playing Freelancer for a while now, and you know the tricks to finding out who the syndicate leader is relatively fast, then I'm sure you already know how powerful this map can be for showdowns. For the rest of you, I highly suggest trying to pick campaigns with Whittleton in them and just trying it out for yourself. If you don't know the super quick ways to find out who the syndicate leader is, even from across the map, I suggest watching the plethora of YouTube videos about it and giving it a go. Practice makes perfect and you'll be a better hitman for it in the end. This is the first video that I've ever made like this, and I know I didn't mention all of the things that make this map so great, but I hope you can understand that I respect your time and didn't want to drag this out for longer than needed. I want to do more videos like this, and I hope to even cover other games in the future as well. But for now, what map should I talk about next? Leave some suggestions down in the comments, and whatever I see the most of, we'll consider that the winner and I'll talk about it in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, I really loved making this video. If you enjoyed it, consider leaving a like and maybe even subscribing if you want to see more in the future. I stream on Twitch Monday through Friday, as much as my work schedule allows anyway. And I play a variety of different games there, but you can often find me playing Hitman when I'm between single player games or there's a Twitch drop going on or whatever. So maybe check that out if it interests you. I'll leave a link in the description for my Twitch channel, as well as a link for my Twitter and Discord, which are the best ways to get notified for when I'm going live. Again, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, take care.